and welcome into this reading. I hope you're doing well. Hope your week is um, off to a wonderful start. I don't know why I feel called to tell you that the weather today is pretty cloudy and kind of tumultuous, it feels like. Lots of random gusts and little sprinkles of rain. Not too much blue in the sky, but some, some poking through. Um, and it kind of feels like that's the collective energy, like like nature or Mother Gaia is reflecting the collective energies right now. Um, as Mercury goes direct and issues with communication and electronics start to uh, resolve and get better, um, it feels like there's still just a little bit still hanging on. Um, so let's go ahead and cleanse out the energy of the space. I've already uh, shuffled my decks and cleansed myself in my space, but I always like to uh, do a little sound cleanse at the beginning of each reading to realign everybody, reattune everybody to the energy of love. This is a 528 tuning fork which is directly connected to the heart chakra, but is also sometimes called the miracle tone because it helps bring in those miracle energies and the energies of healing, okay? So let's first start with what this message is going to be about. Then we'll grab some advice from the animals and the crystals to close out. Okay, but I actually just want one. Hmm. Cutting to storm spirit. Yeah, and today there are some thunderstorms forecast. Hopefully that's after I finish my uh, my messages. One card, please, to see what this. What are we talking about today? What's the overall energy? Strongest energy, please, from my angels. Ascended Masters and Spirit Guides. Oh, Ascended Masters. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Ascended Masters really want to come forth today. So thank you for coming forth. Yeah. Some sort of rite of passage, it feels like. Um, you can see that this woman is holding on to her dress, and it feels like she's doing that to set it, sort of get a sense of the wind, to see what direction the wind is going. But she also has her hand on these stones, um, because she's stabilizing herself and she's barefoot, she's grounded, and she's connecting to the wisdom uh, of Mother Gaia, the wisdom of the earth. So there's something about um, whoever this message is for, your connection with the wisdom of the earth, your sort of rite of passage or a passage that you're moving through. There doesn't have to be anything crazy, um, but it does feel very spiritual, which is interesting. Um, let's go ahead and grab just two, two signs that this message might be for. I'm being called to deal them out. One, two, three, Leo. One, two, three, Libra. Okay. And we have Cancer at the bottom of the deck. So this is a message for anybody, but Leo and Libra, or if you have fire and air placements, this might uh, resonate with you in particular, okay? I also just remembered that we have a Virgo full moon the same day that uh, Mercury goes direct. So lots of in increased, um, I, I don't know why I want to say increased intuition, but I meant actually increased capabilities of communication, increased clarity in communication, um, all of those good things, okay? Spirit is here. So I shuffle these decks and then I cut them a couple times so I don't know what's at the bottom of the deck when I put it down. I specifically don't look because I want, want it to sort of <laughs> be a surprise for both of us. And I certainly don't want to uh, preload the deck in any way. Lots of green and blue energies going on. So heart chakra connecting to our third eye and our throat. I don't know why this is coming in kind of funny. Oh, thank you for the reminder. So in the, in the pre-shuffle, in both of my crystal decks, turquoise was popping up all the time. So 
if you have turquoise jewelry, uh, for some reason, it feels very encouraged to wear your turquoise. And what's funny is all day yesterday, I was wearing not one, but two pieces of turquoise. And I felt extremely serene, extremely calm and tuned in and very um, grateful. I had a beautiful day yesterday and today has been pretty beautiful as well. Um, despite the weather and despite still having to deal with stupid gang stalking and harassment from the people in my town. <laughs> Just leave that there. Okay, so let's see here. What is Standing Stones all about? And I, I, I laughed and started to say, but then completely forgot to actually say it. Um, when I read Standing Stones, I actually thought Rolling Stones. So you might have, uh, you might like the Rolling Stones, you might like rock music, <laughs> you might like rocks. <laughs> Okay, orange calcite. Wow, 40-40. Woo! And then I just jumped because I don't know if you can see right here in the corner, spotted lantern fly guy. Go ahead, move on your way. Uh, landed on my hand as I saw 40-40. Uh, the 40-40 club, weird, in New, in New Jersey, New York? It's Jay-Z's club. That might There might be some significance there or you just might want to look up um, the angel number 40-40. Okay, but first card out is orange calcite. Are we talking about love? Okay, so when I sat down here um, and I looked out onto the water, I'm at a riverfront pavilion. Uh, just through the grasses, I saw two ducks flying very low, um, right above the water. And it sort of caught my eye because it's kind of hard to even see the water. So the fact that that came out um, might be significant, but I don't know if you can see because of the lighting here. I'm also wearing <laughs> sunglasses, so it's a little bit hard for me to see the screen. Um, but there is a couple in this heart of orange calcite. Standing stone passage. Oh, okay, so it feels like maybe um, whatever struggles you've been going through lately have to do with your acceptance of love and readying yourself emotionally, energetically, and spiritually to move into a period of love or move into a period of deepening relationships, being open to creating additional relationships, having the confidence to be yourself in current relationships or in future relationships. Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, spirit guides, angels of the highest white light, the highest vibration of love, truth, and clarity, what else do we need to know here? Also called to call out that 4 plus 4 is 8, something about infinity, lo infin infinite love, unconditional love. Anything else from this deck? That was interesting. I hope that was caught on camera. It was like I pulled the car or I pulled the these cards out. This card sort of hopped off the top and then before I could close again, it fell. It's interesting what that is. So it feels like something might pop up on you or something might um, appear out of thin air. Obsidian, 39. Okay, so I'm feeling called to move it this way. <laughs> um, the Virgo in me. Obsidian, 39. And then 40, 40. So we're talking about a progression here. Ah, okay. So I know obsidian is not coal, but in this instance, the energy that I'm getting is coal. Obsidian is formed from lava, is formed from fire. So we did have Leo come out um, as one of the energies here, or one of the, the, the energies that I'm reading for today. And I just sort of peeked over at my tiger eye as well, which is a very um, fire element stone. Hmm. So you're either a fire sign or you're dealing with a fire sign or you're sitting in your um, fiery energies, passionate love. Um, but what I'm understanding from this is with Obsidian, oh, and I didn't even notice it before because I haven't used this deck in a while, um, but we have this, this Native American with their wisdom, seeking, looking upwards, seeking wisdom. 
And so I'm also noticing that the, the headdress on this Native American is turquoise in color. So there, there are no or there are no um, accidents here. This is definitely a synchronicity. And then again, uh, there's a sort of a spiral action here that just caught my eye as well, almost like the storm. I'm not feeling like this is the calm before the storm. It actually feels much more grounded than that. It feels like the calm after the storm. So the storm doesn't have to actually be like a tower moment in your life. It could just be within you. The energies within you were stormy or tumultuous and you're coming out of that with this progression from 39 to 40. And perhaps this, this stormy or tumultuous time was a rite of passage for you, something that you had to experience. But when I first got this card, I actually saw it as, as coal um, because it, it's sort of like the start. When you start coal, you have to sort of, you have to start it with fire. Um, I'm thinking about like charcoal for cooking. Um, and so it feels like something sparked the embers within you having to do with love. Something is sparking passion within you. And it, and this storminess, yeah, and then we have this red dress, which is like passionate root chakra energy. Um, there's something stirring within you, but it's not a bad thing. It feels like it's, it's a, it feels like it's the result of a reflection that you've noticed that you lack love in your life or you would like to expand the energy of love more in your life. And whereas in the past you could have just sort of brushed it off and, and been distracted with other things, right, the day-to-day, -day, feels like it's, it's almost like you can't deny it anymore. That's why this, this woman here um, has her hand. She's like stabilizing herself, right? She's grounding herself, but she's also stabilizing herself because it feels like she can't move forth or she, she can't go back, rather. Uh, she has to move forward. And so she's sort of plotting her course or, or deciding what to do next. But she's looking out into this vast expanse of, of beautiful colors, knowing that this passage or this, this way forward is, is one that, that will be joyful and one that will be good for her, one that will be a learning and growing experience. Um, and I'm also, it's interesting, these are two different decks, right? But I see these like sparkly bits and these colors also sort of reflected in this standing stone card. Like the, the world is your oyster, the universe is your oyster. <laughs> Thank you for that little confirmation, a siren. Yeah, so this is absolutely having to do with the heart expansion, but there's not, I, I don't know if you noticed, there's no green. Well, there's green in the back of the obsidian card, but there's no green here. And when I often talk about a heart expansion, I talk about, you know, or the colors that come out, the crystals that come out are green. So this feels like a spiritual love or a spiritual connection. It, oh, excuse me, I just laid it on my shoulder. It doesn't have to be romantic. I don't even want to say love. I want. I, it feels like partnership. Maybe it's not love that you're lacking in your life, but it's it's true partnership where there's trust involved. And the orange um, here often represents the sacral, the solar plexus chakra, or at least for me, that's that's how I'm reading it. Um, and it feels like perhaps there what you didn't have confidence in the relationships or the partnerships that are in your life, and you're being encouraged to build that confidence or have more trust and what's funny is I very distinctly got the thought I don't know how to have trust when I said that and obviously that's not personally me speaking but whoever I'm channeling right now or whatever energy I'm I'm reading right now you're I don't want to say you're preventing that expansion because of your thoughts or, or the energies that you're holding or the memories that are are being triggered right now but it it's almost like you have to start the fire right and allow it to get roaring and raging 
and allow that fire within you to burn away anything that that's preventing you from giving trust to to another person or giving trust having trust in a relationship very interesting message here okay, i don't want to go too deep <laughs> i also don't want to go on too long so i'm going to go ahead and get some words <laughs> some advice from this daily crystal inspiration deck oh, i just got very hungry yeah there's a the hunger and the fire with it i just saw the um the hunger card from the uh, prism oracle which is again orange there's there's a certain sense of hunger and and i don't want to say there's emptiness there's space there's space to be filled what i was about to say is allow that fire to burn away any any trust issues and start to ignite more passion within you i stop shuffling in carnelian at the bottom of the deck feed your creative creativity feed and then rose quartz open your heart yeah this is about love this is about being open to love but also um being magnetic and pulling in the love the type of love that you want if you want passionate romantic sexual love then then you are you can you are a powerful being you can attract that to you but if you want true partnerships and you want like the twin flame type of love you want that soulmate connection type of love you you are capable of manifesting that within to your life as well interesting um okay <laughs> Go with the flow. Aquamarine. What is the um, strongest crystal energy recommended here? So obviously out on the table already, we have obsidian, which is going to sort of help you release any anything that's preventing you from loving yourself. It's going to help you connect to... Um, I don't know why this is coming through, because this is not a typical thing of obsidian, but infinite wisdom of how to love and how to give love. Wow. <clears throat> and then we have orange calcite here, which um, a couple months ago, I got very strongly that, the, you know, quartz crystals are, are the most popular crystals, right? When we think of crystals, we often think of some form of quartz. But for some reason, it feels like there's the energies of, of the planet and the energies of the collective are shifting towards um, calcite, uh, or at least for me. And it feels like calcite is going to be the healer. So if it if quartz in the past was known as the master healer, it feels like um, different forms of calcite are going to sort of I don't want to take it say take its place, but also uh, rise to prominence and rise to popularity because of the healing capabilities here. So we have orange calcite um, here as well as a stone that you can work with to heal this heart energy and heal any confidence issues around attracting and manifesting love into your life. Whatever type of love that might be, but it really feels like partnerships here. So again, any any um, specific crystals that want to come out, any words from this, this deck that want to come out, please, Spirit, thank you. Get back into balance. Okay, so one of the ways and she's like balancing herself, like I said. One of the ways that you can invite this love back in is releasing and letting go of uh, potential worries, uh, potential trust issues, um, anything that's preventing you from attracting and allowing love in your life, but also finding balance in, ooh, wow, wow, interesting. How you speak to yourself is what came through really clearly. How you treat yourself. Ooh, so love starts at home is another wow what the fuck are these mess sorry what are these messages they're coming in like real clean real clear um love starts at home so maybe with obsidian there's also a, a little bit of like self-care going on here or that's recommended here to quiet okay quiet the storm come back to a grounded energy where you're not putting out the flames you're not putting out the passion obsidian is formed from lava that heat right that's what gives it its glassiness that shiny reflective appearance um but you're not well, well, excuse me mr fly stop buzzing in my ear and giving me chills um you're not being encouraged to w wipe out the storm or um what's the word i'm looking for where you snuff you're not you're not being encouraged to snuff out the embers you're actually just being encouraged to embrace the storm learn from the storm and let it pass and again i don't really know what the storm is for you it might just be 
where you're sitting energetically or emotionally at this moment in time, just roll with it because it's gonna it's gonna pass soon. It's not going to be forever. Oh, okay, now I understand. Okay, so um, this is saying get back into balance, but it's it's actually saying to me um, balance is coming. Right, so you, you might have to take some actions to get back into balance, whether that's establish a yoga routine for yourself, interesting, um, establish a cleaner diet so that you can become more of a, a channel for divine insights. You can know what you're feeling without any sort of um, outside interference or interaction. I don't know why alcohol is coming through very clearly for me. Maybe take a little break from the alcohol if, if you like to... Uh, have wine every night or something like that but the progression here is um growing within yourself and finding that balance within yourself so that you can invite in this beautiful healing loving energy of partnerships and, and passion wow that's beautiful okay um yeah and that, that love is going to soothe your soul in some way and the fact that you're actually open to it and you're seeking it is what's going to bring it in for you. Ooh, false start. False start. Mm. So perhaps you put yourself out there in the same energy that you're being encouraged to uh, adopt now. And something happened that knocked you off your, your balance or knocked you off your path or took some confidence away from you, stopped you from trying to attract or... or have that love, that passion in your life. And just know that it was a false start. It had to happen for a reason. Perhaps that person wasn't for you. Perhaps their future doesn't align with where you're going. Um, but don't sit in that energy too long. Don't sit in the storm longer than, than you have to. Don't follow the storm. Don't chase the storm, right? Allow it to pass and learn from it. And then have appreciation for what you've learned from it. But again, it feels like the storm and this this false start was a rite of passage in a way so that you can learn more about yourself and you can learn more about what you want. Whoa, I don't know. That is the craziest thing. That's never happened to me before. But when I said that, I got like, not that I saw stars, but I got like a twinkle in my eye. Ooh, that's cool. Um, from the animals, please. Animal spirit, strongest animal spirit. Okay. Dream the world into being. I'm not going to take that because there's like multiple cards here and I really just want one or two. Um, but that was lizard spirit, dream the world into being. And I often um, relate that one to the, or that card to the chameleon card, which is act as if. So it's like, you almost have to act as if you expect this love to be here because, and you almost, you know, or at least you should know, and I'm gonna tell you right now again, that you are worthy of love in any form that you wish to be, or you wish to have it. And you are love. To be love is to is to welcome even more of that. So perhaps getting back into balance with even how you express love, how you show love to other people, how you show appreciation to other people. When you be love, you are love and you attract even more of that. Interesting messages coming out. One or two, please, spirit. One or two animals. And the advice that these animals bring is what I'm really after. We already have some beautiful advice here. Just to close this message out. Oh, it's really sloppy. Yeah, so there's still that chaotic energy. But we have cow at the bottom of the deck saying miracles are endless. Just beautiful. Look at how decked out that cow is in all these flowers. This is what I feel like you're stepping into. And look, again, with the orange energies here. This is what I feel like you're progressing towards. And it almost feels like this cow is being celebrated. Like, I don't know if the, um, what day that is, but there's definitely in the Hindu religion a day where they celebrate the cows and they like put flowers on them and um, give them special treats and all that stuff. And so it almost feels like that's the period that you're walking into. So your advice from the animals is to know that miracles are endless and to expect them. But also, yeah, again, with the flowers around this rhino, um, you can overcome any obstacle. And so this this passage was an obstacle for you, this stormy, tumultuous feeling, whether it, it's, it actually manifested in your reality as shit that you don't want to deal with or tough situations. Um, 
or whether it was just more of an internal battle, an internal emotional settling, and an internal mental um, fog that's clearing now. Just know that you can overcome any obstacle. And if you feel like you're struggling right now, know that that um, astrologically and energetically, uh, we're entering into a period, I mean, we're not completely out of the dark yet because there's still lots of planets in retrograde and there's lots of other stuff going on. But you personally, whoever I'm reading for, are entering into a period where there'll be less obstacles and it'll be easier to overcome those obstacles. But the rhino here, even though it's decked out with all these roses and beautiful um, little adornments and stuff, uh, the rhino is a tough animal, right? And I don't know why this just came through really, really um, clearly, but like the animal at uh, the rhino, wow, words, where are my words? The animal is a, wow, the rhino is a tough animal, right? But I don't know if you've ever seen a real rhino or a, rhino, a video of a rhino. They do this thing to get the flies off of their ears where they like flick their ears and it's the cutest. And they also do the same thing with their tail. And there's something about this, like you, as you grow through this, as you move, into this energy someone is going to find the smallest thing about you to be absolutely adorable and and like irresistible and you might have this tough exterior on and you might um you know be sitting in in fiery energies where uh, i don't want to say you're unapproachable but you just have like a little shield up um but you're going to let that down or, or somebody's going to see you in a certain light where you just like do that cute little ear flick or you, you flick your tail to get those those flies away and they're just going to love you for it. I mean, that's one of the things they're going to love about you, but that I don't know why that's coming clear or coming through so clearly that it's going to be the smallest thing that you can't trick this person or you can't, yeah, you can't trick this, this relationship or this person who's coming in for a relationship or a partnership. You can't trick them. You can't deceive them. They know the soft, cuddly, loving being that you are beneath all the fire and the, the tough exterior that you might be showing. Um, it's very interesting that that, that message would come out. Um, but I'm being called to come, to come back to the words on this card to encourage you and to let you know that you can overcome any obstacle and the obstacle that you're currently facing is almost up for resolution. Okay. Where does this want to go? Do we want another animal? Okay. looks like we want another animal. Um, that's interesting because I wasn't feeling that before, but I just actually noticed 40, 40, 50, something about happening in, in tens. And what's funny is I'll tell, I'll tell you a little story yesterday. I was, what happened? I looked at my phone, <coughs> excuse me, at something 33. It might've been 533. And then I kept picking up my phone exactly 10 minutes in exactly 10 minutes after that. So I saw 533 and then I picked it up again and saw 544 and then I picked it up again and saw 555. And so there's something about a progression in tens this person might be 10 years older than you or 10 years younger than you. I don't know why that came through pretty strong either. Hmm. Any other words and, ad and advice from the spirit of the animals oracle, right? That's what this is called. Spirit animal oracle. Thank you. Oh, dolphins. Hello. Oh, wow. Look at that. Beautiful. 20. Yeah. So there's something about the tens. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out where to put this. But it came out this way. This and that are true. Okay, so what this is saying to me is, and this is speaking to your past energies, I feel like. Um, whatever you've learned from this passage, whatever difficulties you went through, and maybe even whatever you lost from this tumultuous period in your life, don't sit too long trying to analyze it. Don't sit too long looking at that past sort of accept it for what it is and know that whatever the circ wow, that bird. Hi. whatever the circumstance um and however you're seeing it both this and that are true about it the good and the bad are true about it right everything every situation whether we want to believe it or not balance hello um is like a yin yang there's there's good elements and there's not so great elements and so it's almost like a blending has taken place that we have with these storms swirling around a blending has taken place 
um, but because you've done the work to ground yourself, to look outward, and to trust that you'll be shown the way, you'll be shown how to move forward, and you do so with an open heart, you do so with space in your heart and space in your energy, knowing that you'll overcome every any obstacle, knowing that you'll be able to bring balance to the situation, knowing that you are open to new partnerships and love, or at least putting that energy out. That's how you'll move forward. Whoa, okay, interesting. That's how you'll find your pod. Hmm. Okay. So to bring this all back to 3D, <laughs> bring this back down to Earth. I know I've been talking a lot, but that's interesting. Um, obsidian, agate, and orange calcite are some crystals that you might use during this period of time, whenever this message comes across your feed, to help you to release what's not serving you, to help you get back into balance, and, and appreciate the progression. So agate is formed in layers, and there's something about that progression, right? From 39 to 40, but now even 20, 40, 40, 50. There's something about that progression in tens. It's almost like you're, you're, you're jumping timelines or you're able to jump timelines at this point as long as you maintain balance and you open your heart. Okay, you are able to overcome any obstacle and perhaps these obstacles that you're overcoming are not little things. Perhaps they're deep, deeply rooted and deeply seated emotional or energetic things. And so as you overcome them, you, you quite literally are growing in leaps and bounds. And each layer or each, each obstacle that you overcome becomes part of the beautiful agate that you you are if you want to look at yourself like a stone each lesson that you learn each experience that you have in life and a bluebird just flew by freaking beautiful bluebird just flew by um, each lesson that you learn adds to your, your personal beauty adds to the love that you can share. And it's part of your uniqueness, your unique expression of self. Wow, okay. Feeling called to uh, end your message there, but before we do that, why don't I read from this book about agate? This is my favorite crystal book. It's called Healing Crystals. And, the, and it goes very in-depth. There's like all kinds of agates here. Flame agate. I'm being called to read flame agate. Protection and sensibility promotes friendliness and objectivity. Helps cope with emotional wounds. If, yeah, this is like an emotional wound that's been healed or had to do some healing. Makes attentive and prompts one to seize opportunities. And strengthens sensory organs, tissues and tissues covering organs or hollow organs. Interesting. So the hollow organ thing just, um, just, just reminded me, and of course the word is escaping me, but inter something, that they recently, not recently, it was like five years ago, they discovered, but it was somewhat recently, that there's another organ within our internal organs, and inter, interstitial, interstitial, inter something, um, but basically, on the outside of all of the organs within us, that, that, not skin, it's an organ, uh, actually sends messages to the other organs and all the other systems in your body. And, and there's something about a healing of that? That's very interesting. It, it, there's something about the, the signals that we're firing within your body may not have been sending or you may not have been interpreting the messages correctly and as a result of this healing that you've done as a result of the uh, of getting back into balance the messages that are being sent from your heart to your liver the messages that are being sent from your kidneys to your small intestine whatever it is it'll be clearer and you'll be more oh, okay that's what it is okay you'll be more confident in knowing what you're feeling and owning what you're feeling and knowing how to act on those things. And a lot of what I was talking about has to do with your gut as well. 
So maybe even getting your gut back into balance. But the whole point of this is to say that if you can, the, the, the most recommended crystal I'm getting from this reading is um, agate to help you to bring balance to the messages that are being sent and bring balance to the organs within your body, the, the energies in your body. Again, with yoga, balancing. Hmm, okay. So if you can grab some agate and you can do some yoga uh, in the next few days, it'll definitely be to your benefit. Um, if you enjoyed this message, please consider giving it a like. Uh, you can comment below, share with somebody who you feel might uh, benefit from this message. If you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel for additional messages like this. And if this is where we part, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you let whatever storms might come your way uh, just move on by without having to react to them or get yourself involved too deeply, okay? Thank you and take care.